Kanding is in the south of Taiwan and arguably most famous for its beaches. However, I went there on a three-day, two-night excursion and found that Kanding has a lot more to offer than just beaches. Now, first and foremost, if this is your first trip to Kanding or in Taiwan for that matter, you should know that this is probably the safest country that you'll ever visit. So if you're taking a taxi late at night in the city or whether you're taking a train down to Kanding, rest assured, you are safe. Now, speaking of trains, the easiest way to get down to the south is by HSR, the Taiwan High Speed Rail train. You can take it from Taipei Main Station or from Banqiao all the way to Kaohsiung or Zhou Yin Station. If you've never taken the HSR, watch the clip I did on how to take the HSR train. Once you get to Kaohsiung, you have a few options to get to Genting, the most popular being the bus. You can take the Genting Express bus from the HSR station. If you go out exit 2, you'll see the ticket sales booth of the bus right there. Now a one-way ticket is going to cost you around about 400 NT and a return ticket probably around about 650 NT. Now buses depart every half hour from 9 a.m. in the morning until 7 p.m. at night. The trip can take anywhere between 2 hours to 4 hours depending on the traffic. You can also ask a taxi driver to drive you down to Genting. The price may vary between 2,000 to 4,000 NT, depending on where and when you catch a taxi. Since I get fiercely motion sick, there is no way in hell I could take that bus. So I decided to rent a car. Luckily, my friend Ross suggested that I hire a car through Pony Car Rental because they have much better and more reasonable car hire prices than some of the other services. If you go out of exit 4 from the HSR station, the pony car rental is just across the road to the right. I rented a little Toyota Yaris on Sunday, Monday and Tuesday at 1500 NT per day. To rent a car you need an international driver's license as well as a photo ID and a credit card as insurance. If you have a Taiwan license, you do not need a credit card as insurance. Kenting itself was quite a surprise. It's much more spread out than I thought it would be. If this is your first time to Kenting, you should watch the drive-through clip that I did on Kenting to orientate yourself. It will also give you an idea of how spread out this place is. The point being, if you are not hiring a car, you should probably think about renting a scooter when you get to Kenting. Kenting has a couple of bays with clusters of B&Bs and hotels in each bay. However, you can only swim in some of the bays. Others are nature reserves. But be careful because even the bays and the beaches that you can swim at have some strong underwater currents. So be careful if you go in the water. The beach in front of the Caesar Park Hotel is probably one of the more popular beaches and it's right next to the main road. Now this road lights up at night and becomes a very festive night market. We stumbled into the first Thai restaurant on that strip if you're walking from the Caesar Park and it was fantastic. In fact, the food was so good at this place that we ate dinner there on Sunday night as well as Monday night. And next door to the Thai place there is a convenient little cocktail bar that sells really good mojitos. Almost parallel to that main strip runs Dawan Road with lots of beach facing B&Bs and hotels. However, the nicest beach I saw wasn't anywhere near the main area. A 15 minute drive southwest lands you on Bai Sa Beach, a beautiful white sand beach which reminded me a lot of Koh Samui. Besides beaches, Kanding has a few other interesting excursions like driving to the southern tip of Taiwan. Now when you pass that point and you continue up the coast, you'll see some spectacular ocean views. A place that really stood out was the slumping cliffs, which looks like just coastline cliffs, but upon closer inspection, you'll find that the cliff rock is in fact old coral rocks, which are now nowhere near the water. Probably the highlight of my trip was the natural fire pits just north of Kenting. This is something really magical and of course a night activity. Unfortunately, noisy tourists cooking anything from eggs to popcorn on the fire kind of spoils the magic. So if I had the chance to go there again, I think I'll probably try and go really late at night in the hopes that nobody else will be there. While you're in the fire pit area, you can also check out the remains of the old city. There are four gates that are pretty much still intact and the one that we saw even had a large piece of wall still attached to it. A slightly less magical but very interesting nonetheless excursion was a trip up to Hobihu to see the nuclear power plant's water cooling exhaust. Basically it's this enormous river of what I presume is warm water being pumped back into the ocean 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. 
At first I was slightly alarmed due to the impact it must have on the surrounding water temperature, but then there were people sitting right there fishing. So I guess something survives and lives in this water, although whatever it is, I won't eat it. And last but certainly not least, while on the topic of water, I do suggest that you make a trip up to the aquarium. And if you are a fast walker, budget on three hours. This place is huge. You're gonna do a lot of walking, so I suggest that you wear flats. I did an entire clip on just the aquarium, so go check it out on my blog, as well as some other clips I did in Kenting, including 10 possible places that you can stay in Kenting.